and sickness every single day. So they sent a health inspector to check out the school's kitchen. Now, at first, everything appeared to be normal, but when she took one look into the soup bowl, she immediately called the police. They found thousands of spider eggs. Kids had been mixing it into the soup each day. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel, man. If you guys are brand new here, this is your first time on the channel. What we do, man, we break down the scariest and creepy videos, man, on and there, on and where, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos to IG reels, anything weird, usual, un and unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. I um, want to thank the Seekers, man, who's been tapping in with us, man, who's been subbed out to the channel. You guys are seeking the truth, man, so I appreciate you um, finding us today. I turned, I messed with the volumes again, man, because I said how y'all couldn't kind of hear in the last video, so I turned it up for y'all, so we seeking the truth, bro. Let's see what we're going to find out today, Seekers. This couple was arrested after these siblings were found deceased in a suitcase. Five-year-old Jesus and three-year-old Yesenia Dominguez went missing in the summer of 2018. But it wasn't until January 20th of this year when police received a call about a container filled with concrete found inside a storage unit in Colorado. After investigating, they found the remains of Yesenia encased in the concrete. They then began searching for Jesus and in February of this year, they found his body in a suitcase inside a car at a scrapyard. This car belonged to Karina Minjares, who was a girlfriend of these children's father, Jesus Dominguez Sr. The father of his children and his girlfriend were arrested and charged with two counts of first-degree murder and two counts of abuse of a corpse. Normal look. Oh, good seekers, man. How could they do that to their own freaking kids, bro? It was like back-to-back. -back. They found like, the girl in January and freaking son freaking February, man. And the fact that they put them in freaking suitcases filled with concrete, bro. Seekers, bro. What makes people do these evil things, man, to their own freaking friends and families? I, I never get that, bro. It's like the most freaking insane stories I hear. They'd be happening to their family members or friends. That's a trend I've kind of been noticing, Seekers. Looking photos with disturbing backstories, part two. This Snapchat was the last photo ever taken of Sydney Loof, a woman who was killed by her Tinder date. Her body was cut into 14 different pieces, and when it was brought back to the morgue, it was in six different bags. This man was transferring oxygen tanks for 12 boys in their coach. He didn't have enough oxygen for himself, however, and died after losing consciousness in one of the cave's passageways. This man is a sea sagawa, an actual cannibal from Japan. This photo was taken by a Japanese magazine after he was released from prison for insanity. The man in this photo, Franklin Floyd, married a woman and had custody over her children while she was in prison for 30 days. The girl in this photo is one of her children, whom Floyd kidnapped to start a new life with. He left the other siblings behind, and after this photo was taken, he went to another state, changed both of their names, and claimed her as his biological daughter. Later, he went on to marry her. No freaking way. The hell did something like that even happen? Seekers, bro? Did they even, they even catch them? Seekers, man, you gotta be careful, bro. Who you freaking leave your freaking kids around, man? You never know what type of freaking thoughts is going into their freaking head. And that guy, man, who was a freaking cannibal. He was a cannibal, bro. He came out and he got a damn photo shoot. Like, what's with that, bro? You eating people, man. And he's saying, oh, we gotta flick you up, bro. You, you, you special. Like, what the hell? I do even want to even if we can propose something like that, Seekers, bro. I'm telling you, man, this media and stuff, bro, we gotta pay attention, bro. Gotta lock in. This is what would happen if all humans fell asleep for one year, part two. Mm. Up first, after about two weeks, it wouldn't be good at all. All food in everybody's houses would begin to go bad. All the freezers and refrigerators would shut down which would result in spoiled, wasted, and rotting food. Mm. Next up, after 15 days, all domestic pets like cats and dogs would begin to struggle extremely badly. They would begin to starve and roam the streets, which would then result in them eating each other for food because they're so hungry. After 20 days, all farmland would be destroyed. This is because all the crops would be eaten by wild animals, since there is no humans around to stop them or keep them out. Next up, after about 35 days, all cities would begin to be covered by plants. They would be growing underground on the streets, sidewalks, and buildings. Virtually anywhere. 
This would then result in insects being in places they should never have been, like our houses and apartments, which just wouldn't be good at all. Just imagine waking up after a year of sleeping and seeing everything you loved and owned completely covered by insects and plants. Wow. These are eight horrifying facts. Guess why we should never be all of us, man. Imagine the freaking humans, bro. We all went to sleep for a year, bro. We have like some devastating consequences. You wouldn't think about it in the short term, but if you think about the long term impacts, bro, that's just not possible, man. All those, like I said, the whole cities we cover with plants and stuff, you wake up, insects gonna be all around you. Man, the saber wear seekers. That's something I don't even think about, bro. Like I said, when I watch these videos, it always expands my knowledge base, man. Hopefully it does the same with the um, child fellow seekers. That will probably keep you up at night. There are thousands of old diseases frozen in the glaciers of the world. And global warming will eventually release them all. If a person dies in their costume at Disney, like Mickey Mouse, they have to be sat down on a bench so it looks like they're resting. Climate change is making spiders bigger. Some female spiders allow their young to eat them alive. Tooth in the eye surgery is when surgeons put a tooth in a blind person's eye to restore their sight. It was pioneered in the 1960s and it actually works and it's still being done today. The chances of a successful CPR outside of a hospital is only 7%. Cell phones are 10 times dirtier than a toilet seat. When you suddenly wake up during the night without any reason, there was someone or something staring at you. Yeah, there's a lot more, like for part 12. I'm sorry, man. I have to pause at that one, Seekers, bro. Especially that cell phone fact, man. You wouldn't even think about it because you put your cell phone to your freaking head, like, how many times throughout the day, bro? And the head that is actually dirtier than the toilet seat? I'm going to have to check that out, Seekers, man. You guys believe that fact? Or is that cap? Cap or fact, man? Tell me down below, Seekers. I got to check that out. Where's this guy? This is how cartoons look in different countries. In the movie Zootopia, mm. animals host a new show. In America, the host is a moose, but in China, he's replaced with the panda. In Australia, he's a koala, and in Japan, he's a tanuki. Moving on, okay. in this scene in Inside Out, the main the character Rally refuses to eat broccoli, but in other parts of the world, like Japan, the kids actually love broccoli, so they replace the broccoli with green peppers. Mm. In a different scene in Inside Out, when Riley's dad is daydreaming about hockey, only Americans actually see this. This scene has actually changed the football for the rest of the world because it's the most popular sport on the planet. In Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear gives a speech in front of the American flag, but in other countries, this would seem a little weird, so for the rest of the world, they replace the flag with the world globe. Next, in Pokemon, while Ash and Brock enjoy this on a Gary, in the American version, they actually call it a jelly donut to appeal to Americans. Next, in this scene in Inside Out where Bing Bong reads a sign and points to the letters, not only did they translate the sign for other languages, but they even went as far as to reanimate Bing Bong so that he points to the letters right to left instead of left to right to accommodate the languages that read that way. Moving on, Rochelle from Plains changes her name and appearance depending on whatever country the movie is being shown in. So in the UK, Michelangelo's nunchucks are actually replaced with a rope because Britain wants to avoid surges of violence. In Monsters oh. University, Randall makes cupcakes that spell out Be My Pal, but they're actually replaced with smiley faces around the world to avoid translating the icing to different languages. And lastly, Minty Zaka from Wreck-It Ralph is changed to Minty Sakura in the Japanese version, and she also gets a Japanese makeover. Disturbing mm. facts that will ruin your day. There are between 25 and 50 active serial killers in the United States at any given time, according to the FBI. If you live a full life, you're going to have shed over 100 pounds of your skin. Cruise ships are legally required to have morgues for the passengers that inevitably will die on each trip. A nightmare on Elm Street was inspired by a true story. A boy was having disturbing nightmares and refused to sleep for multiple days. The same night that he succumbed to exhaustion, he died in his sleep, but not before screaming for help in the middle of the night because of his nightmares. If you try to grab the brain in its natural state, it will fall apart. When you see scientists pick up a brain, it's because they've used chemicals to harden it. There are still 40 million people worldwide that are slaves. Three in four of those are women, and one in four are children. Follow for more. That ass fact is just freaking sad. How is something like that even still going on, bro? There's still, like I said, 40 million slaves in the world, worldwide, bro. 
That's a test. That's a freaking huge number, Seekers, man. We definitely, bro, gotta do something, man, about that number, bro. That shouldn't even be happening, man, in this day and age. Go to show you, man, if you ignore a problem, bro, how it can balloon and become even bigger, man. It's insane, Seekers. Truly. This teacher essayed a 13-year-old student and then claimed she was pregnant. This investigation began on November 2023 when this boy's parents contacted a school after they discovered inappropriate messages between 27-year-old Adriana Rulon and their 13-year-old child. Adriana was a teacher at Antonio Gonzalez Middle School in Texas when she began this relationship. The 13-year-old stepfather became suspicious after the boy spent more than $130 in a store. When he asked the child where where he was getting all this money from, he told them that his friends gave it to him. His stepfather had a hard time believing this, so he went through his phone and that's when he found the inappropriate text messages and photos from Adriana. He also noticed large amounts of money coming in through Cash App from Adriana, which explains the purchases that this boy was making. His stepfather became more worried when he saw a message that Adriana was pregnant. And what's disturbing is that the essay was happening everywhere, including including during school hours in her classroom. Adriana eventually confessed to everything and she even said that she's heard of these cases happening to other people, but she never thought that it would happen to her. What does she mean she didn't think it was gonna happen? She didn't think she was gonna get freaking caught, bro? I hear that she might be freaking, you know, pregnant because of what happened, man. Sick world secrets, bro. Thing and it got to me, she said it was happening everywhere, bro. Even in that classroom during like school hours, man. Nobody was picking up on that, bro. Might be more to that case, seekers, because I ain't freaking having a hard time believing, man. It's happened during school hours and nobody was picking up on that. What the hell were the people at that school doing, bro? This is the terrifying image of a woman cowering on her rooftop trying to escape an intruder when he pops up behind her. What happened mm. to this woman is like something of a horror film. It was September 2014 and Melora Rivera was at her home in California. Unfortunately for her though, she was not home alone on the day in question, although she was initially unaware of this. Melora worked as an actress and actually had a part in the Whitney Houston film Sparkle. Mm. She was in her bed when she noticed somebody in her property. He had apparently broken a panel to reach inside and unlock one of the doors. Mm. Terrified, the woman tried to escape onto the roof to alert authorities. She managed to balance up on the roof and ring 911 before, terrifyingly, he jumped up and appeared behind her. This image was captured by a passerby. Thankfully, police arrived on the scene and the man was arrested. Ooh. He was identified as 29-year-old Christian Hicks. He was swiftly arrested and the woman was rescued off the roof by the fire brigade. Did you know that the sun loses 350 billion tons of mass every single day? And it will uh -huh. continue to do so until one day its outward pressure gets so strong that the sun's gravity no longer resists it, and the sun begins to expand so much that it swallows up Earth completely. There's also a type of star known as vampire stars that do exactly as their name suggests, and consumes another star before they explode into a supernova. 250 million light years away from us is a place in space known as the Great Attractor, and even though we don't know what it is, we do know that it's pulling our galaxy and a bunch of other galaxies towards it at speeds of 600 kilometers per second. In 2012, we missed a solar storm by just one week. If that storm had been ejected one week earlier, it would have caused a global blackout so devastating that we'd still be recovering from it today. Also, black holes can be mobile, and we found one of these space-time eating machines moving at 3 million miles per hour. 59-year-old Karina Smith ah. filled a bucket with boiling water in the middle of the night. She mixed it with sugar to make it more viscous. Then she went to her bedroom and poured it over her 80-year-old husband, Michael Baines's body. Damn. He got skin grafts for his major burns, but he later did pass away. 13 years earlier, her son had committed S-word. Her son had previously been imprisoned for assault, and he told her that it was a P-word who had touched him. So in 2020, when his sister, Karina's daughter, mm. told her that her father had been assaulting her and her brother for years when they were children, Damn. Karina put the pieces together. After pouring the water on him, Karina went to a neighbor around nine doors down and said, I really hurt him, I think I've killed him. His skin was peeling off when he was found, and he told officers, I just want to die. Her sentence was life in prison for murder. 
She pled manslaughter because she just lost control and anger after what her daughter had told her. But since it took 13 minutes for the kettle of water to boil, that was like overturned. It was also alleged that she went nine doors down to a neighbor that she apparently wasn't very close to just to waste time. Therefore, it was concluded that it was a murder case with revenge as a motive. Mm -hmm. This was a really fast video, but I saw this last night on freaking Reddit of all places, and I just needed to get it out of my head. <laughs> like, this whole story is just really sick. I hope the right. daughter is doing okay wherever she is, because, like, oh my fucking... That case was a freaking insane, bro. To beat the pieces together, man, and what happened to her son, bro. And that was the freaking dad all along, but she took it to the freaking extreme, but I guess it just freaking broke her secrets, man. She said she had to do what she had to do. Like I said, I wonder what happened to that, what's how the daughter's doing, man. I'm going to, I'm going to do some research into that. Check that out, bro. kids, I'll never let them use the bathroom alone. A seven-year-old girl and her mom were headed to Target, and she was getting some clothes for school. Her mom also wanted to grab some snacks for movie night. So while her mom went to go grab popcorn and other snacks, she told her daughter to go pick out clothes for school. Mm. When her daughter finally finished and picked out the clothes, she went up to her mom and said something strange happened. A sad pale lady had came up to her, <laughs> telling her that she wished she could have her own daughter that looked just like her. The mom who thought the daughter was just joking around, laughed it off and said, let's go. While heading to the register, the daughter shook her mom and said, that's the lady who told me she wanted a daughter just like me pointing at a mannequin the mom laughed mm. thinking the daughter was still being silly you know how kids like have wild imaginations always playing around while at the register the daughter had to go to the bathroom so the mom told her to hurry up it was only a couple hours down by the way while in the bathroom the daughter texted the mom saying the pale ladies in here who wanted a daughter the mom trying to get in a rush back home to her other kid said hurry up we have to go stop playing around 10 minutes later and the daughter never came out the mother who was mm. waiting outside the bathroom at this time rushes in the bathroom to see what the heck is going on the daughter was nowhere to be found she even checked the stalls to see if her daughter was hiding standing on a toilet or something on one of the stalls she found her daughter's cell phone on the floor by the way if you made it this far in the video comment down below your favorite fruit mine is mangoes when she checked her phone this was the last image found in it police still to this day have no explanation on what happened to that little girl Seekers, man. I'm guessing that's just a freaking sign, bro. Listen to your kids, man, when they when they see something, bro. Like I said, you know, hey, you may see a kid, oh, they just playing, they have an imagination, but nah. Those kids talk sometimes, but they, they tell her the truth, bro. They ain't playing, they ain't playing around all the time, man. Look what happened, bro. She thought her kid was playing around and somebody went in the bathroom so and just took her, bro. Maybe because she pointed to a mannequin, maybe that's what she think. Maybe that's what the woman had looked like. She probably literally, literally wasn't talking about the mannequin. That's freaking insane, bro. You can freaking scare her out of the damn bathroom, bro. You can get taken anywhere, man. Hey. I have to call her like I see a sickness, bro. Can you just bro. pass my fingers on the table, please? See? Edit. Thanks. Lock the door too. What the hell? What a headache? See, cause is this an edit or is this legit? I need your guys help on this one. What the? What the hell? Floating in 
Schneider. Let's talk about all the allegations made against Dan Schneider in the new Quiet on Set documentary trailer. Mm. Investigation Discovery is releasing a four-part documentary series that goes over the alleged misconduct and abuse that happened under Dan Schneider's reign at Nickelodeon. And the first allegation we see is workplace misconduct. Working for Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. Mm. Dan's treatment of people on his shows was an open secret. And we know that around this time, the two female writers from The Amanda Show were uncomfortable around Schneider because he was constantly asking them for massages, something that he himself admitted. Another allegation that's made is that these three men were known predators who were working at the network at the time, kind of alluding to the fact that this was a systemic problem happening at the network. The trailer also hints at the fact that the documentary may have gotten a bombshell interview for this. Someone who was being coached by other child actors at the time and is now ready to tell their story. Some have suggested that it may be Jeanette McCurdy because in her book she alludes to the fact that there was inappropriate conduct on set of iCarly and also that she was given hush money to never talk about it. And because she had previously filed a complaint with Ariana Grande against a producer of Sam and Cat claiming that there was inappropriate conduct on set. And some have suggested that it's Alexa Nicholas because she has publicly stated that she never felt comfortable working around Schneider and that working for him was traumatizing. But the documentary comes out on March 17th and I for what? one am very curious what it has to say. Seekers, are we watching on March 17th bro? Let me know man because I'll definitely have to check that out bro. Because you know I've been seeing it, that things especially like with Jeanette McCurdy and stuff and how you know her journey and our call it that's how it changed her bro. Man, they speaking child actors, bro. Like I said, getting into Hollywood, bro. That's like it's. If you want to get into that business, bro, it's like there's some dark things that take place behind the scenes, bro, that you got to be freaking prepared for, bro. They just don't know because you're kids, so how could you know? But man, March 17th, bro, I'm going to have to mark, mark that down my calendar, day Seekers. I'm going to have to watch that, bro. We seek the truth out here, bro. It has to be a pixie. Just keep watching up behind me on that ledge. Oh, sorry about that. He was, he was doing. A, oh, there he is. Okay, it's mm -hmm. there. Uh -huh. oh, well, at least we've got a shot of, of one. Seekers. Cap a real bro. Mm -hmm. No, it's looking iffy. Hard to tell. Oh, okay. Oh, that doesn't look good. There's another one up there. Oh, whoop, whoop. Um. Oh, that doesn't look friendly. That one's the male. So. I thought that was the female burrow, so mm -hmm. I don't know quite what he's doing there. Where has he gone? Behind those trees there. Oh, he's off. Let's just see if I can. I passed away trying to put a TV in my stomach. Hello, I am Poe, one of the Teletubbies. Mm -hmm. You know who I am, but you don't know my dark history. Before all the sunshine and happiness, there was darkness and loneliness. We were four children stuck in a Bulgarian mental facility they called Teletubby Land, where they experimented on psychotic children. Mm -hmm. They isolated us into dark rooms. La La, the yellow tubby, was a child with a facial disfigurement, making mm -hmm. her smile all the time. Tinky Winky, the purple tubby, was a deaf child that was tied to a fence outside and suffered frostbite. Mm -hmm. Dipsy was a malnourished child that was constantly sick, and Meepo, I fell into a fire when I was young. Our only source of comfort in our rooms was our little televisions, but as part of an experiment, they told us they were going to take them away. Mm. We didn't want that to happen, so we came up with the idea to put them into our stomachs. They were too big to swallow, so we tried to cut them open and put the television inside, but we didn't make it. Remember where we came from. Remember our suffering. Okay. Another edit, bro. I'm sorry, I gotta call that like I see it. What the hell? 
Is freaking shaking the freaking camera or something, bro? This kid was missing for four years before people realized something was going on. Part three. Ooh. If you haven't seen part one or two, go watch them right now. When Sean was 11 years old, he was captured by a man named Michael Devlin. Michael Devlin held him captured for four years and tortured him every day. He even forced him to do horrific acts and recorded them. And for months, police were looking for Sean, but they had no idea where he was. To the outside world, Devlin was a father figure to Sean. He even taught him how to drive. He went all over with him. But in private, it was different. When they were alone, Devlin would torture Sean. But Devlin wasn't satisfied, so he kidnapped another kid named Ben. Ben was crying in the car, so people reported Devlin to the police. The police then came into Devlin's home to investigate what Devlin was actually up to. Devlin was too scared, so he confessed to the police. And while the police were looking for Ben, they actually found Sean as well. Both Sean and Ben both went back to their families. Devlin was sentenced to prison. But something even worse happened to Devlin in prison. If you want to know what happened to Devlin in prison, make sure you follow my Instagram for part four. Thanks for watching. Man, that freaking goes to show you, bro. Like freaking in public, man. They thought he was the freaking perfect father figure. He taught teaching the son how to drive, but behind the scenes, he's a completely different person, bro. See, cause isn't that freaking like scary, bro? Like how you can portray yourself as something to the public, and then like you can be a completely different person, bro. But the cameras and stuff is off, man. It's freaking crazy, bro. You always gotta be aware of seekers, man. People aren't who they seem to be, bro. <laughs> you never know who a true person is, man. I guess without the cameras and stuff, when it's off, that's when they're gonna reveal the true selves. Let's talk about what the show Griselda on Netflix gets right and wrong about the life of Griselda Blanco. Okay. Because the show works really hard to make her look like a victim when that is not who she was. And a reminder that if you want to deep dive on her life before watching the show, definitely listen to this week's episode. Hmm. Let's start with the first episode when Griselda is covering up a wound that she got from her husband, Alberto. And that is correct. Alberto did fire his weapon at Griselda, but it did not happen how it happens in the show. Because in the show, Alberto makes Griselda sleep with his brother to wipe out their debt. And she's so disgusted by this that she goes after Alberto. And he gets a shot in, but ultimately, she's the only one that leaves that interaction alive. But hmm. in real life, Griselda was not letting anyone tell her what to do especially Alberto. What really happened was Alberto and Griselda were fighting because Griselda didn't like the way that Alberto was running their illegal operation. So one night, she takes her posse and she shows up to the club that he's at. The two ended up getting in a fight in the parking lot and let's just say Alberto left that fight in a body bag. And this is when she goes to Miami, which the show gets right. But in the show, she goes to Miami with no money and they show her like crammed in a guest bedroom with her kids while she's trying to make some money. When in reality, when Griselda went to Miami, she was richer than most people people in america her net worth was said to be around 500 million dollars and she owned a mansion that had a bronze statue of her inside and there's maybe something to say here about how hollywood makes women look battered and bruised in order to make them more understandable but that mm. is not who griselda was and if you want an overview on her reign of terror listen to this week's episode this is the victim of child Guess just goes to show you, bro, like I said, the facts and stuff, what we see in the media and stuff, how they can just, like, switch it up so it can, this can be convenient for a storyline or something, man. They don't, I guess, go for a beat by beat to truth, man. They have to freaking mix it up for drama and stuff, but, bro, I feel like if you're going to adapt a story, bro, you at least have to try to stay true to the material as much as possible, right? Or am I just chipping seekers? That's what I think. Child abuse who hunted other abusers down and attacked them with a hammer. Jason Bakovich mm. was born in Anchorage, Alaska. His mum was a single mother who later married a man called Larry Fulton. Far from Larry becoming a father figure to Jason, he actually became his abuser. Larry adopted Jason and used the family's Christian faith to his advantage. He would treat late night prayer sessions as an opportunity to abuse Jason. He also subjected Jason to severe physical beatings. Jason's brother was also abused by Larry and the pair experienced horrific beatings one after another. Shockingly, although Larry actually was charged with abuse of a minor in 1989, he didn't actually go to jail. The boys were left in the hands of an offender, so they decided to take matters into their own hands. They decided to flee the abuse by simply running away. Now, Jason was 16 at this point and had no way to earn a living. The brothers went to Washington State and decided to commit crime to make money. Jason ended up moving around numerous times and ended up with a record including theft and assault. In 2008, he moved back to Alaska, and in June 2016, he hatched a plan. Mm. He selected some S offenders of the local registry to target. He picked three men, Charles Albee, Andres Barbosa, and Wesley Demarest. 
First heading to 68-year-old Charles's house, he forced him to sit on his bed, confronted him, hit him, robbed him, and then fled. Ooh. Just days later, he showed up at Andres's house, threatened him with a hammer, and punched him. He then targeted the third man on his list. Oh. He forced his way into Wesley's home around 1am one evening. He actually had two women with him at the time to carry out this attack. He demanded the man got to his knees, but Wesley refused. Jason ended up hitting him in the head with a hammer. As he did so, he stated, I'm an avenging angel. He explained that he was getting justice for the people he'd hurt. Oh. He stole items from the house and fled the scene. When Wesley regained consciousness, he called police and Jason was arrested. Wesley suffered extreme brain injuries following the attack. Jason was charged with multiple offences and was sentenced to 28 years in prison. He got five years suspended and another five on probation. Oh. Jason did try to appeal due to his PTSD from his child abuse, but this was denied. Jason now tries to deter other victims of abuse from doing what he did. He stated, I began my life sentence many, many years ago. It was handed down to me by an ignorant, hateful, poor substitute for a father. Uh -huh. He said, I now face losing most of the rest of my life due to a decision to lash out at people like him. Ooh. See, because what he got snake, man. He said he was a freaking an avenging angel, bro. But trying to take matters in his own hands. He took it. You too. We got snake, man, at that freaking case, bro. He was going after everybody, bro. Who was on that list? Mm. Crazy, bro. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Seekers, man. If you guys made it with me to the end, man, you're a true seeker. Seeking the truth. I appreciate that, man. Like I said, guys, I adjusted the audio level so it should be way higher so you guys can hear the videos more clear, bro. Like I said, man, tell me in the comment section down below, man. Do you guys want me to start a Discord so you guys can send me clips? that I can figure out to like scary creepy rogue TikToks man all the TikToks that you guys want me to check out man um I think I could do that through Discord but I need you guys to tell me down below if I should do that or not hit that like button subscribe hit that post notification bell so you always get notified when I upload a video we're so close to a thousand I appreciate each and every single one of you guys you guys can catch in the next one I'm out peace seekers What's up, YouTube? Welcome back, Seekers. Um, you guys already know what we do here, man. We bet down scary, creepy videos, man, on and then on where from YouTube videos to TikTok videos to IG reels. We have it all here, man, on this channel. Um, like I said, thank you guys who's been um, tapping in with us, man, and subbing up to us, man. You're seeking the truth, just like, uh, just like you. And once again, as you guys can see, I changed um, my layout. Tell me what you guys think of this design down below. Um, it fills up the full screen, so no more of that extra space. Just check it out. Human body, you better know. Your nose can recognize over 50,000 different smells. Mm. And whenever you smell something, you never forget it. Next, did you know it's impossible to tickle yourself? Go ahead, try it. Moving on, your brain uses around 20% of the oxygen you breathe. Meaning, if you don't get enough oxygen to your brain, there's a high chance you could get brain damage. Mm. And did you know the human heart actually beats over 100,000 times a day? I just find it so crazy. But what I find crazier is that you're taller in the morning than you are at night. So if you need to measure yourself no matter where, do it in the morning. Okay, the thing that got to me was when it's saying our heart beats over like 100,000 times per day. I never knew that, bro. Man, it goes to show you, bro, how like, hard the freaking human body actually works, man, to keep you sustained and alive. It's freaking crazy, bro. Like I said, man, I'm just like you guys. I'm a fellow seeker just like you, man. I'll be learning new facts every single day and I incorporate them into my freaking um, everyday life, bro. Like I said, man, wow. The, the seekers, bro, when you tap in with us, man, you're going to learn new information bro, every single day. Tell me if you guys learned doing something new, bro. This might be the most brutal way somebody has ever died, and whatever you do, don't look up the picture. Octavio de Silva was a 20-year-old soccer referee in Brazil, and on June 30th, 2013, he was refereeing a soccer game when he sent off a player named Josmir Santos Abreu, who was 31 years old. He refused to leave the field and began a fight with the referee. Abreu threw a punch, which made Octavio draw a knife from his pocket and repeatedly stab Abreu. Abreu died on the way to the hospital, and when fans watching the game, including Abreu's family and friends, 
found out about his death, they invaded the field and stoned Octavio before decapitating him oh. and then ripping his limbs from his body with just their strength and no weapons and then put his oh. head on a stick in the middle of the field. And what makes this worse is that a graphic video surfaced online shortly after the incident showing medical personnel reassembling Octavio's body. Oh. The video and pictures are extremely disturbing and I don't recommend looking them up. The way his limbs looked after being ripped off is extremely unsettling to look at because you see strings of flesh, tissue, and bone because it wasn't cut off properly and it was just ripped off. Mm. This case is absolutely awful, but why did Octavio pull out a knife when somebody just punched him? If he didn't stab Hosme or Brayu to death, he would still be alive today. But just imagine being literally ripped limb from limb by an angry group of soccer fans. Mm. And there's nothing you can do as they pull your body apart. Doctors couldn't ex- It's a freaking, just insane freaking case, bro. Like, I guess, do you know how much strength you had to have? Like they said, they had no weapons. They literally like pulled his freaking body apart, man. And it was over a freaking soccer game as well, bro. Like, it's not that damn freaking serious, bro. Like I said, bro, people, man. Fans, bro, you know, when they, I guess, playing a sport and they favorite play got to get taken out because they did a foul or something like that, bro. Like, it really <laughs> affects people, man. But the hell, like you said, it started over punching. He just stabbed him. I'm like, what the hell, bro? I wonder if that was, like he said, I wonder if that was loud, too, because he said the freaking the footage surfaced a couple of days later after that freaking gruesome attack. Bro. Like you said, he lady had to put his body together, man. They like stoned him, bro. I'm like, what the hell, man? I'm, I'm the question I'm asking, like, how did the other players and stuff? I guess they just let that freaking happen, right? Everybody, they just sat there and watched as that happened, bro. Hmm. Huh. That's the real question we need to be asking. Explain why this kid was sick until they see what the school was serving. This is mm. Chen, and he was a second grader who moved from Beijing to Seattle back in 2019. He started school just like any other kid, but he was immediately outcasted. Since he couldn't speak English perfectly, all of the students and teachers were treating him horribly. But things only got worse from there because Chen started to feel extremely sick. Every day he would come home with rashes and a burning fever. But then he'd wake up fine the next day, go back to school, and the cycle would start again. This kept happening for three weeks until Chen's mom finally decided to take him to the doctor. They found out it was actually food poisoning causing Chen's sickness every single day. So they sent a health inspector to check out the school's kitchen. Now, at first, everything appeared to be normal, but when she took one look into the soup bowl, she immediately called the police. They found thousands of spider eggs. Kids had been mixing it into the soup each day. Let's talk about this. What the hell? I remember freaking being in school, but I remember, bro, I was not a freaking fan of um, freaking at a school lunch, bro. Because of freaking cases like that, man. Like you said, spider eggs, bro. Who in a right mind was mixing spider eggs in a damn soup? And he was getting sick, bro. Like, it was a cycle. He was just, like you said, good for a couple of days, then sick, good, then sick, bro. Like, man. Thankfully, I guess like he survived because nothing happened. Like, imagine what happens if, if he can like hatch the side of him, bro. Oof, some chill, chills down my damn spine, man. That's what I said, bro. Be worried about that school lunch, bro. I'm sorry, man. If you're in school, you're sending kids to school, bro. I recommend, man, sending them with some lunch, bro. Homemade lunch from, from the house, bro. Do not, do not trust school lunch, bro. I'm trying to tell you guys, it's not, it's not the right move this picture. This is why if I ever have kids, I'll never let them use the bathroom alone. A seven-year-old girl and her mom were headed to Target, and she was getting some clothes for school. Her mm. mom also wanted to grab some snacks for movie night. So while her mom went to go grab popcorn and other snacks, she told her daughter to go pick out clothes for school. When her daughter finally finished and picked out the clothes, she went up to her mom and said something strange happened. A sad pale lady had came up to her, telling her that she wished she could have her own daughter that looked just like her. The mm. mom who thought the daughter was just joking around, laughed it off and said, let's go. While heading to the register, the daughter shook her mom and said, that's the lady who told me she wanted a daughter just like me pointing at a mannequin. The mom laughed, thinking the daughter was still being silly. You know how kids like have wild imaginations, always playing around. While at the register, the daughter had to go to the bathroom. 
So the mom told her to hurry up. It was only a couple hours down, by the way. While in the bathroom, the daughter texted the mom saying the pale lady's in here who wanted a daughter. The mom, trying to get in a rush back home to her other kids, said, hurry up, we have to go. Stop playing around. Ten minutes later, and the daughter never came out. The mother, who was waiting outside the bathroom at this time, rushes in the bathroom to see what the heck is going on. The daughter was nowhere to be found. She even checked the stalls to see if her daughter was hiding, standing on a toilet or something. On one of the stalls, she found her daughter's cell phone on the floor. By the way, if you made it this far in the video, comment down below your favorite food. Mine is mangoes. When she checked her phone, this was the last image found in it. Police still to this day have no explanation on what happened to that little girl. It's a freaking bone chilling story, bro. Goes to show, man. Like I said, sometimes you know how sometimes, like I said, I guess parents they don't, I guess, listen to kids because, like you said, they think they're just playing around or it's their imagination. But no, sometimes the kids, what they're saying is true, man. You gotta take heed to their word, bro. Because, like I said, that's speaking, I know, that's speaking one of my freaking worst fears, man. Like, you could just be here one minute and gone the next because somebody just freaking snatched you up, bro. And the mom thought, yeah, like that her daughter was freaking playing the game, but clearly wasn't. I gotta do some more research in that case, man. He said she's still gone to this day. I wonder if she ever found her daughter, bro. That woman, man, she was the freaking key, bro. She 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 said the daughter was pointing to the mannequin, but maybe that could have just been a metaphor for something else, bro. Who knows? is celebrating one of the seven deadly sins. Valentine's Day represents lust. Mm. Thanksgiving, that celebrates the sin of... Oh, yeah, yeah, because you're, you're eating a lot. Mm. You're overeating Christmas. What do you think that is? Greed? Greed. Yeah. Overconsumption and excess. Mm -hmm. Stuffing gifts. We're not really even celebrating like the birth of Christ because people are so focused on the gifts and shit. The holiday of Easter, what, what sin would it be? say it's envy because envy. the romans were jealous of jesus so they murdered him oh it's crazy saint patrick's day what? it's sloth and what? people get blacked out drunk oh what the fuck yeah. now halloween is what it's wrath so Ooh. scaring and hurting people for fun with masks it's wrath oh. uh, the sin of pride okay what's that oh no nah, no nah, we're not even gonna say that man I never even thought about it like that, but he just freaking expanded my mind. If you think about it, like I said, these holidays, they do represent, I guess, the basis behind them of what they're meant for. They do kind of represent, I guess, which, the, um, I guess, the sense he was talking about, bro. Hmm. <laughs> like I said, all secrets, bro. When I watch these videos, man, with y'all, I'm just like one of y'all, bro. I'm learning new information, man. I'm just try to incorporate it, bro. I'm freaking everyday life, man. Whoa. Because that makes sense. He said Thanksgiving, freaking gluttony. Because that makes that does make sense because of Thanksgiving, man. People, they eating a lot of food, bro. And, and it's sometimes it's excessive, man. Because you know they eating too much. And Christmas is greed because, you know, you're getting all those presents and stuff, like I said. But you're not even celebrating, I guess he said. Um. What you're, what you're supposed to be. You're just celebrating that you're getting the gifts. And he said, Easter was envy because the Romans were envious of Jesus. Expanding my knowledge base seekers. That's what we got to do, man.
school is closed. This is nobody else there. People born with crazy. That's not how the way that freaking that dog freaking reacted, man. I'm guessing, bro, could was picking up the scent, bro, of her in a freaking trash can, man. But the hit man hit said he was only 14 years old, bro. Don't act like that, man. What makes that even go into into their freaking mind, man, to do something like that, bro? You saw the way that how the video was starting off, man. Like he was ducking around the corners, just watching, and then when he put down his head, man, you know he had freaking devious thoughts in his damn mind, bro. And look what look what happened at the end result, man. The thing that gets to me is that like the hallways they were empty, so I wonder if like school was closed or were they there early or something because there was like nobody walking in that hallway besides them two. So school either had to be closed or they was there very early. Bro, it's just show you, man. Like I said, it doesn't matter how old you are, bro. If people want to do some evil things, man. They're gonna to try to find a way to get it done, bro. Unfortunately, that's what happened. Mutations. This mm. is Johnny X. He had a condition called caudal regression syndrome, which basically meant he had no lower body. He worked as a sideshow performer in circuses back in 1930, and he mm. actually played Goonie Bird in the original Tarzan movie. Three dark psychology fact. What the hell? I didn't know he would he'd be born without a lower half and he survived, bro. Mm. She got some on damn head, man. Never knew like that was something even freaking possible, bro. They said he played Goonie in the freaking original the Tarzan movie. I guess the old version, bro. I wonder if have any more. Pretty sure yeah, some more people, I guess, were born with his condition, man. This, I've never seen him before, man. Like I said, bro. These videos, bro. Expanding my knowledge, bitch, bro. That's one thing, man. I appreciate these videos, what they do for me, man. There's an extremely high probability that a stranger has looked at you and thought about killing you without you even knowing it. The person mm. you first look at when you enter a room is the person you feel most threatened by. When you spend 10 minutes in front of the mirror in a dimly lit room staring at yourself, your mind gets bored and starts scaring you by making you see a monster with your face combination. Really? And they were both found dead. She must have been out of her head. Oh my god, this is literally the dumbest man on earth. Hi, my name is Ethan and here is everything you need to know in under one minute. On June 26, 2023, Patrick Profried and his wife were having an argument. Now they had just had a baby that was only three weeks old, so the argument was early in the morning, which is understandable because they are suffering from lack of sleep and just a whole new adjustment. While Patrick's wife was holding the baby, Patrick entered the room holding a crossbow. The mood immediately shifted and trigger warning, it's about to get dark. He allegedly raised the bow and shot at his wife. When he did it accidentally hit his three week old baby and his wife, he then pulled the arrow out of his wife and begged her not to call 911, but when she did regardless, he fled the scene. Thankfully, he was found and arrested and charged with second degree murder and attempted, and his wife was okay. Unfortunately, the baby did pass away. Man, bro. Did that to his own blood, man. His own freaking newborn baby, man. What the hell were they freaking arguing about, bro? That would possess him to get a crossbow and shoot it. And then just gonna ask his wife not to not to tell. Or not to freaking call the police, man. Like, after that act you just committed, you think she wasn't gonna do it, bro? I said, these videos, man, that we watch, man, these people, man, they don't want to freaking take accountability, man, for their freaking actions, bro. It's actually, man, freaking insane, bro. How many of those freaking people we come across when we watch these videos? Never ceases to amaze me. And I did. I'm gonna call it like I see it, bro. The world's worst job, otherwise known as Sheehan or Sheen, however you pronounce it. Hi, my name is Ethan, and let's get right into this. Recently, I've heard a lot of rumors about how bad the Sheen workers are treated each day, and honestly, nothing could have prepared me for what I learned. 
This all started in June of 2022 when a viral TikTok displayed articles of Shein clothing with handwritten messages stating, need your help. According to Brightly.eco, they state that the average Shein worker works seven days a week in 18 hour shifts. They even found that some of the workers were seen washing their own hair while they were at work just to keep up with their personal hygiene. Not only do they work a lot, but they also make a base salary of $556 a month to make 500 articles of clothing each day. Let me know what you guys think. That's freaking criminal, man. To think, think about it, like the clothes that we're wearing now, man, was made by those workers, like blood, sweat, and freaking tears, and they only getting paid that little, bro. And working that many hours, bro. Ooh. It's like it's the simple things in life, man, that we don't freaking pay attention to, bro. What the hell, bro? They need to freaking go on, I guess, can they go on strike or do something like that, man? I'm guessing they don't want to because then they try to push back. Then maybe they, like, try to take away their jobs for them. That's the only way they have to freaking support their family. That's why they're working that long, man. That many freaking shifts, bro. Like, they had to hear them say they was washing their hair or they was there to keep it up with their freaking hygiene, man. That shows you, I guess. How freaking grueling the condition job, bro. Sometimes, man, that's why we got to appreciate the freaking clothes and pants and socks and stuff we bring now because it all comes out of their freaking the hard work, bro. Out of their hard work and labor. Just a small stuff like this, man, you can't take for granted, bro. Expand my mind, base. Here are some things that you didn't know the real purpose of. Have you ever wondered why the bristles on your toothbrush are colored? This is to indicate that you should get a new toothbrush when the color fades. And have you ever wondered what the 57 is on the Heinz ketchup bottle? Henry Heinz thought that the number 57 was a cool number. So to make sure everybody knew which ketchup was his, he put 57 on all the bottles. And have you ever wondered what the small holes are in airplane windows? These are to help keep the windows from frosting up. And it regulates the air pressure inside the airplane. Have you ever wondered what those little bumps are on the highways? These are rumble strips put there to wake up sleepy drivers scary that's freaking interesting man i never knew there was like little small freaking um circles in that damn on the airplane window because i thought that they couldn't be like it had to be freaking sealed shut because you know we can't have that type of air pressure um coming in through the windows it makes sense man now that i think about it, you said because it breaks i guess the air temperature inside the plane because imagine if it was like fully shut, I guess no air was coming through, it would kind of be like, you're gonna, it's like you're going to be cooking in like a freaking can, bro. I guess it has to be that small. Hmm. Three facts that will blow your mind. It wasn't a dream, it was a message. I have been remembering, like, I remember a couple of dreams, man, like, so freaking well that I'm thinking that it was actually, like, a memory, bro. Comment down below, man, like, um, has that ever happened to you guys? But, like, you remember a dream so well that you actually think, like, it's a freaking, like, memory or something, man. Because that happened to me a couple of times, and I've always wondered, like, what? What does that mean, bro? It's like I can remember, like it's a freaking memory, like it actually happened. And I think, think about it. He said it could be a message. That makes way more, way more sense, man. I guess I gotta start paying attention to my freaking dreams more, man. I guess somebody's, some trying to tell me something, man. Okay. The craziest real event caught on camera. In 1982, during the filming of The Twilight Zone, the movie, a stunt helicopter was hovering 25 feet above Vic Morrow and two child actors. Ooh. When pyrotechnic explosions damaged the helicopter, causing it to crash, killing all three instantly. This Mackenzie Shirilla situation is wild. It's this 19 year old Ohio teen who last summer was driving in a Toyota Corolla with her boyfriend Dominic Russo and his friend Davian Flanagan. And then when the car turned onto the road, it suddenly accelerated, jerking left and right until it barreled head on into a brick wall at 100 miles per hour. When first responders Ooh. arrived, the two men were pronounced dead at the scene. Mackenzie was found unconscious and trapped inside the mangled car. But instead of getting hit with manslaughter charges, she got slapped with multiple counts of murder. And that's because prosecutors mm. alleged that this was no accident, saying that she actually crashed the car on purpose. 
because she was trying to kill her boyfriend with whom she had a tumultuous relationship and that his friend was just collateral damage. But I'm pointing to evidence like a computer analysis showing that she floored it without ever making an effort to slow down, going so fast her fuzzy Prada slipper was found stuck to the gas pedal. Plus, a few days before the crash, Mackenzie mm. took the same obscure route, apparently plotting her crime. So all that leading to this week where she was found guilty on all counts. And the judge saying she had a mission and she executed it with precision. And you can see her sobbing uncontrollably as the judge reads her verdict. Her actions were controlled, methodical, deliberate, intentional, and purposeful. Hey, bro, like, you see her, she's speaking crying. So I'm like, you plan... It, like it says, she laid it out, but like you planned out the freaking full thing, man. And the hair, like that, she actually like planned that out like the day before, like she took that route, and then I guess they planned out the specific time what to do, man. Like it said, she floored it, hundred miles, took out her boyfriend and his freaking friend, bro. He was just collateral. She didn't even care, bro. Try to end it all, man. Like I said, these toxic relationships, man. Why does sometimes people just step back and just say it's not working? We could just break it off before anybody else. Gets hurt. Like it's that simple, bro. Just to, it's that simple. But I guess to other people, man, they just can't break that freaking bond with that other person because I guess it's too hurtful. It's too much for them. Crazy, bro. Just hang on. Did you know in the movie Scream actor Skeet Ulrich almost got seriously injured while on set? And it happened in this scene right here when Sidney dressed as Ghostface stabs him with the umbrella in the chest. Ulrich had pads underneath his shirt so when the umbrella stabbed him it wouldn't hurt but the second time he got stabbed the stuntman missed the pad and actually hit his chest. His chest actually has metal wiring inside because he had open heart surgery as a child. Whenever the wiring gets hit hard or has intense pressure, it hurts a lot, and so his scream when he gets hit the second time was 100% real. The stuntman had hit that wiring and he fell to the ground and screamed. He was okay though, but they kept it in the movie because it was so authentic. This, I've heard that freaking a couple of times, man. You know, movies like something like really authentic and real happens, man, like that it traumatizes. It's like the actual actor, but they keep it in there, man, because it's so real. Sometimes I question that. I'm like, do you guys think that's actually like the right move to do? I know like it gives off a great performance, man, but they have that person just actually showing like legit pain or they're actually scared, but they keep it in there, man. I guess because they know it's gonna, I guess, sometimes make the most money, bro. It's gonna, I guess, shock the audience, man. That's what they really want because they know that's gonna bring them more money, man. Like I said, when it's sometimes, bro, no, it can be the root of all evil, bro. Things that people would do to just to get some of that, I can truly shock you. This is the Pitbull video, one of the hardest cartel execution videos to watch. Explain mm. the video that I'm about to explain is extremely graphic, and I don't recommend searching for it. The video begins with a man lying on his back on the ground, and two men are holding his legs open. He's being restrained, and in total, there is five perpetrators and one victim and also two pit bull dogs. Apparently, this is the victim's punishment for allegedly doing something with a kid or to a kid. The victim is naked, and at the start of the video, the dog has done most of the work. The dog already ripped off the man's privates, and it's just a bloody mess. The dog continues to rip pieces of flesh off of where his privates used to be, and the victim is being held down, and he is also gagged, so he can't scream. But sometimes the gag came loose, and at this point you could hear the man scream in pain. The victim was even talking, but I couldn't translate it, but that means he was completely conscious during this. Which I can't even imagine the pain. As a man, this might be one of the worst videos out there. Funky Town is bad, Ghost Rider is bad, but as a man, I can't imagine anything more painful than a pit bull ripping off your junk while you're still alive. Not many people mention this video with the other disturbing ones, but it's definitely up there. There's not any information about the victim after the video. I don't know if he died, but it's safe to assume he did. He lost a lot of blood, and if a dog eats your privates, you will most likely get an infection and die from it. All in all, this video is very graphic, very real, and very disturbing. 
please do yourself a favor and never go searching for this video, especially if you're a man. I never do. Mississippi woman who killed boyfriend and locked his body in freezer denied appeal to overturn conviction. That is a crazy mugshot right off the bat. Why are you smiling so hard after killing somebody? No remorse. This is Samantha Simmons, and she killed Thomas Burns. After Thomas's wife died of bone cancer, he eventually moved on and met Samantha Simmons. Hmm. However, he definitely was not over it. He would carry her urn everywhere he went. Eventually, Samantha Simmons and Thomas Burns moved in together in 2018, and neighbors stopped hearing from him all of a sudden. One of the neighbors that frequently had coffee with Thomas came over to ask where he was. Samantha Simmons said he moved to Texas, and the neighbor did not believe her at all because all of his cars were still there. They tried to file a missing persons report, but they couldn't because technically they weren't related. This is where things get crazy, and the neighbors turn into the Avengers here. They noticed the moving company came, and then the next day they noticed the house was empty with music playing on the stereo. They decided to go inside and check out what's going on in that house. They found a freezer with a sheet on it, so they broke that open. They had to use a crowbar to pick the lock and everything. Ooh. That's where they found Thomas Burns' body in there. He was curled into a ball, placed in the freezer, next to a bunch of frozen food, too. He also had a bag over his head with zip ties all over him, too. The autopsy report estimated that he was still alive at the time that he was put into the freezer, and that he died by asphyxiation because of the bag over his head. And of course, after looking at the zip ties, they found Samantha Simmons' DNA all over it. She tried to say there wasn't enough evidence in court as if she didn't have DNA all over his frozen body and the zip ties. Wild story. Let me know what you guys think about the story in the comment section below. And check out my YT. Link in bio. It's freaking actually... It's a freaking tragic case, man. Like I said, how was his friend that I guess he used to freaking get coffee with in the morning? How he had, be, had to be the one to freaking solve and crack the case, bro. Like when she said that he moved to Texas, he was I guess he was not buying a man and like he actually broke into the house, bro. I guess to figure out what's going on, man. That's actually that's your true friend, bro. Somebody who actually yeah, cares about you, man. Always gotta have one of those around, bro. Like I said, like she this here and then she put him in a freezer while he was still alive too. I thought he died, I guess, from the temperatures, but no, he died because of, um passed away because of the freaking bag that she put over his head. Crazy, bro. That it. Call it like I see it. That it. me in this video so I'm here to explain the backstory to this whole thing. This is the case of Lauren McCluskey. Now the girl you see in this video was a 21 year old college student in Utah. On October 22nd, 2018 at 9.55 p.m. she was found dead in her dormitory. She was shot seven times. That afternoon her ex-boyfriend waited for her outside her dormitory for several hours. She was on the phone with her mother at 8.23 p.m. when Melvin Rowland, her ex-boyfriend, he violently dragged her across the parking lot in front of her dormitory, dropping all of her belongings. At 8.23 p.m., Lauren's father alerted campus authorities that his daughter was in danger. But around that time, it was already too late. Roland committed slip and slide hours before killing McCluskey. The man who loaned Roland the gun was sentenced to three years in prison. However, this didn't rest there. Two years after Lauren's death, Details started surfacing that campus ignored McCluskey in her claims of her ex-boyfriend stalking her and her life being in danger. It said that Lauren alerted campus authorities about her stalker ex-boyfriend, but they completely ignored her. The family ended up suing the university and in exchange, the university paid them $14 million, but the damage was already done. That still didn't help the fact that the university ignored one of their brightest students who had scholarships to choose from. Like and follow for more. This it's freaking crazy, bro. Goes to say, man, that's how sometimes black people, they truly just don't care, man, and how that can just affect everybody else around them, bro, because she said she reported it, and they just didn't pick up on it. They just didn't care, man. That's what I say. You always got to take heed, man, somebody's words, bro, that 
if it's a situation that's serious, man, how could you just freaking ignore it, bro? That's like, literally, that's their job. The one thing they're there to do, and they didn't do it, bro. And resulted her freaking, losing her freaking life, man. People nowadays, bro, they need to pay more attention, bro. Pay attention to the details. Story behind this mugshot will disturb you. Hmm. This is Randy Petersilge, and in 2018, he was arrested for murder. Randy was a career criminal who throughout his life had been in and out of the prison system a number of times. But in 2018, when he was arrested for murder, prison would become his permanent home. But who did Randy kill? Hmm. Well, we have to go 17 years in the past and go back to the night when 41-year-old Simon Clark, a local father, was murdered. Cool. On November 28, 2001, police were called to a home that was under construction where they found the dead body of 41-year-old Simon Clark. At the time, he was found beaten to death with injuries to his chest and head. And shortly mm. after they discovered Simon's body, authorities discovered a baseball bat that they believed was used in the murder. Now, what's crazy looking back at it is that way back in 2001, the authorities believed that Randy Petersilge could have been their guy. What? He was their lead suspect, but they didn't have enough evidence to arrest him, and so they had to cut him loose. Mm. Eventually, though, over 17 years later, the authorities showed up to Randy's front door and took him into custody. As it turns out, after all those years, a few witnesses had come forward and decided that they wanted to spill the tea on exactly what had mm. happened that night. According to the witnesses, Simon Clark had been murdered over a money dispute. So Simon, on the night of the murder, had gone over to this house that was under construction because his friend had found out that he was paying this contractor that he hired $300,000 for $120,000 worth of work. Oh. So Simon, hearing this, told his friend that he'd go over and talk to the contractors, and keep in mind Simon was married with two children at the time. Ooh. But when he showed up, he met Randy, and Randy flew into a rage and beat him to death. And as it turns out, the contractor that was hired to do that work on the home had been defrauding Simon's friend the entire time in order to buy narcotics. Thankfully, though, Randy was finally arrested and put into prison for this murder where he's now serving a life sentence. And this mugshot has to go down in history as one of the creepiest I've ever seen. Mm hmm. So if we can look on this down, if we can face. People are like, damn, bro. That is one of the creepiest freaking mugshots I've ever seen as well, man. It took him that long after Justice to finally catch up to him, bro. Goes to show you, man, whatever deed is, evil deed is something that you think you're going to get away with, you will get caught in the end. YouTube, that's it, man, for this video for you guys today. Thank you, guys. Tell me if you guys like this new setup. I'm rocking with it, man. Thank you, guys, fellow seekers who's been tapping in when I was running up and supporting the channel. You guys, I'm catching the next videos. I'm out. Peace, YouTube.